welcome back everybody to another episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. As always, all the stories will be marked down below. But the first one, a really big one out there. Many of you guys have wondered for a long time how much players actually make from the sticker capsules that are released every single major. We've had the rumor out there about you know how many thousands of dollars each and every team makes. Obviously, the more popular a team is, the more stickers that sell and the more individual players make. We also had several players out there that tweet out their sticker sales, and so of course, uh, you know, asking us to buy their stickers. We we maybe think, oh, okay, this certain player is making a lot of money off this. We now have some inside information which is actually not supposed to be released on a Danish television station, guys. We had this screenshot captured a device and his sticker sales. So first off, kind of in bigger news here, we do have Steam. This is actually against their agreement policy as of right now. I think uh, as of the 2016 policy, this was against their rules to show this kind of thing. Just like YouTube, a lot of rumors out there that say you can't show your YouTube revenue. We should have some kind of warning coming from Steam towards device. If that agreement policy does hold up, guys, he's actually uh, against the rules what they're doing here. Now, of course, it's not device's fault. The television station themselves are the ones that actually showed this quick clip and of course all of you guys online are gonna be the ones zooming in on that so uh, really quickly it did show us as well how much these players are potentially making and on top of that we all know right now that kind of the basis for this is 50% of the money actually goes to Valve 50% of the sales go to the organizations and we can break down from this is the fact is that of the organization money of that 50% the organizations get these players are getting just about nothing now of course this can change from organization to organization but for Astralis those players kind of somewhat having ownership in that team it seems like the organization actually gets a lot bigger sum. Of course, of that 50%, a device only gets 1%. We can assume each and every player gets 1% for a grand total of 5% of the sales and the rest of the 45% going to the organization. And even though that is a, such a small percentage, as you guys can see on that screenshot, I'll show again for all of you, selling 47,000 or 50,000 stickers, taking just 1% of those sticker prices, even if they are 25 cents a piece, whatever it might be, at the very, very minimum, 25 cents a piece, these players are making a several thousand dollars off in every, every sticker sale especially being a part of the more popular teams out there now of course you take us back to the Atlanta major now that time around the time of the French shuffle going on between G2 and Envious and there were several tens and tens of thousands of, of stickers sold more for each and every one of those players than there were before of course uh, this major came around and of course we had the gold sticker capsules released and so these sticker numbers are actually going up and up and we can assume as of right now kind of an estimation each and every one of these players is probably making anywhere between 1,000 and probably around $15,000 of course with new introduction of sticker capsules uh, Atlanta having the French controversy so those G2 and Envious players are making more and this would be our last major at PGL being kind of a unique one we of course had the gold sticker capsules and so next major might be kind of a down spike unless we have the same gold stickers come back or a new kind of sticker come released whoever actually gets that next major whether it be E-League or DreamHack or MLG whoever it might be so for all of you guys who are wondering the sticker percentages it might change from organization to organization but for the Astralis players each and every player make 1% so a grand total of 5% goes to the team and the remaining 45% goes to the organization other teams out there could have 10 to 15 percent go to the players but it was kind of curious to see how much Astralis players are actually making off stickers but also in huge rumor news as of right now nothing has been confirmed we've actually had several contradictions to this and people saying it is not true and that's when I first heard this story I thought the same exact thing you guys might think sim similarly as well we actually had a rumor out there according to one of the, the former Brazilian teammates out there apparently FNX might be joining SK gaming again and replacing the guy who actually replaced him this might be one of the few times in history in CSGO roster change history we could have a player coming back to a team and replacing the player that actually formerly replaced himself and that would be of course FNX replacing Phelps on that roster a lot of huge rumors out there and a lot of statistical analysis going on right now I want to know what you guys think about this first off when I heard about it, I thought of course no a Phelps being the youngest player has a lot of developmental skills but then you look at the past month and a half for SK gaming and they certainly have had a fall off on that team and Phelps has certainly been one of them and then you go to the role analysis as well you figure that taco is kind of a semi-aggressive entry fragger slash support player and of course his stats are always going to be lower than other players on like cold zero or fall on the roster and so people are kind of over analyzing right now why this would be a terrible trade why would it be a good trade and why would FNX not want to join up with KNG Lucas and Henny of course they have the major spot for Team Immortals and so as of right now no one really knows the full truth if FNX does go back to SK Gaming it would likely be for Phelps as of right now I thought personally it would be for Taco but apparently people making up as to why those stats are actually the way they are I think over the past few months Taco has been that alienated player for having the lower stats in the team but that could be because of his role play on top of that though if this does not go true we can actually assume FNX will probably join up with the other Brazilian members, that being Henny, Lucas, and KNG, and take that, fight, that actual major spot coming up sometime in December or January. And of course, that would be a better team uh, for him to go to. They already have a guaranteed major spot, guaranteed sticker money, and all they have to do is announce a fifth member to have a full roster over there, especially with SK Gaming's current roster, how they've been doing the past month and a half or so. They might be better off going that route instead. Now, on top of this, and finally, in great news for Gamut Gaming, guys, they of course have finally left their old coach, Kane. Kane is now back into Navi. Now, Gamut has announced their newest coach, a former Navi.
Navi analyst, and that is Andy on screen for all of you guys. So congrats to Gambit. Hopefully this coaching role will only entice them to do better in the future. And of course, I think hiring a coach is always a significance of maintaining that roster. So I think the Gambit roster as of right now is more solidified. Not going to see any changes there anytime soon, especially if we're willing to actually announce a coach for that roster. Now on top of this as well, we also had another coaching news, Starx, leaving Team Spirit as a player. Many of you guys do remember he was the former Navi coach. He then left and actually become a pro player for Team Spirit, once again returning to the pro scene. It does seem as of right now he's still a part of the Spirit organization, but he has actually stepped down from that, the player role in that organization, and he might be looking to play for some other teams out there, which of course has led to other rumors with Navi being very, a very, very notable struggling team in the European scene right now. It does lead people to think maybe we could have Starks returning to Navi, the player lineup over there, replacing someone like Flamey, someone like Seas. We're not really sure as of right now. What do you guys think about that? Who we would replace? At first, when I, when I thought about this, I thought Flamey could never be replaced, but now it certainly does seem, especially given the past few weeks or so, it definitely seems, seems as an option for that team. So Starks will return to the scene. Will he have to be bought out though? Most likely. Now, very lastly, guys, as well, we do have North Academy, some other roster changes there. They've actually finalized their roster after losing Glace. Uh, they actually benched two players, Glace being one of them, and they've replaced them with former Trick Esports member Bo Rupp, alongside that, some other members as well. So that's going to finalize the North Academy roster going forward. One of the better Academy rosters out there, and they now have a full five-man roster. And very lastly, in today's episode of CSK News, guys, we have more on Denial Esports. Now, I don't want to trash talk this small organization so much. I really didn't know it's though Denial had branched out into so many esports out there, and many of you are aware of this. Richard Lewis had a video about this. I had a video about this a long, long time ago. These salary issues really stretch back a long ways. We've had several stories over the past year or so about teams not paying their, whether it's not paying teams their salaries or otherwise not paying out tournament fees as well. We've had WESG finals of 2016 where the, the sponsor over there did not pay out their money as well. We've had a lot of allegations around this team, Denial Esports, and it's now come to conclusion. Apparently, Denial Esports, their owner, his name is actually Robbie Ringnalda. He's actually reached out to other owners out there and other companies out there to merge with Denial Esports in order to pay off his debts and resolve his debt issues accordingly across all all of his teams, every single one. Look, listen to this long list, guys. Accordingly, not only to his CSGO teams, many of his CSGO rosters, former CSGO rosters, have reported not being paid. We also, though, have teams from Halo, also teams from Overwatch, Smash, Smite, on top of that H1Z1. Pretty much every single Denial Esport team has had some kind of claim to them not being paid on time or not being paid at all. And so it seems like a spiraling issue, of course, not having organizations pay their actual members here. And yes, they're officially reaching out to other owners and organizations to merge with the roster, or merge with the organization to help pay those debts. Who knows if anyone's going to actually take this on. Of course, taking on any organization, especially any kind of organization with this kind of debt, would be a sizable risk to that organization itself. So who knows if this situation is ever going to be resolved, if these players are ever actually going to be paid. But that's the final situation on that, guys. Always pay your players on time, and just don't start an esports organization if you can't afford to play. I say that as if it's so easy to own an esports organization, but I feel like it's a spiraling effect. Once you own one team, you feel like you have to buy out another one. You're, you're constantly taking on loans, constantly taking on debt. You feel like once in a while it's going to eventually pay off for you, and then it never does. And again, it's a spiraling out of control kind of thing. We've seen this in the past, other teams out there as well. Uh, the one thing that comes to mind with me is Winter Fox, that owner over there, of course, leaving several of their players stranded in Australia. He couldn't pay back their salaries. So it, it seems like a common theme in the past few months, and especially when you have a newer owner out there trying to figure out things and not knowing really what to do business wise. So, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. Thank you all for watching. I will see you guys all either tomorrow or in a couple days with some more CSK News. If you guys did like, please uh, leave a like and uh, comment down below. And uh, goodbye.